my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today is my May TBR and I have been feeling so good about my reading this year and I just really haven't enjoyed making TBRs and I've been somewhat sticking to them. Usually I go off TBR for a few books but I feel like I've been trying to make them attainable so that I actually complete them and then I feel better and then if I just add books on instead of not meeting the books that I have on my TBR, you know, I feel better. So I've kind of come up with a formula for myself of what I think is actually feasible to read in a month and I think that's four to six fantasy novels and you know those ones can be like really big and chunky and sometimes you don't want to stack up your TBR with those because they're really long <laughs> like if a book is 600 pages that's you know equivalent to two 300 page books so sometimes it's more about the pages read than the amount of books so, yeah, so four to six of those and then I would say like two to three romances but sometimes I just get in this like romance spiral and I read them so quickly that I can read more but I usually like to go like sequentially in a series so just putting two or three in the beginning getting works good for me and then if I go and read more that's what happens I mean that's what happened in March with the initiation series where I just had the first one on my TBR and then I read the whole series in a weekend that happens and I feel like balancing out the TBR between books that are longer and take a long time and books that are really quick to read helps me so that I don't fall into reading slump because some books take longer to read through and then you're like oh I'm not reading as much so then you pick up a few like fast-paced ones and then it just keeps you motivated again so yeah two to three romances I can read more if I'm just flying through them and then I have space for like two to three mangas or graphic novels, something that's like pretty quick. So that's kind of like the way I'm going to structure it. This TBR is going to be a bit longer, even though I just set forth that structure, because I'm going on vacation the first week in May. So I'm actually going to have a lot of time to read. But because I'm going to be sitting out by the pool um, at my parents in Florida, I feel like I'm just going to put like a lot of romance on my TBR. And that way I don't have to pack a lot of books. <laughs> which can also be a problem for me because I'm always packing books and they are not light, especially if they're hardcovers. So we'll see how this goes. I'm trying to like plan this in mind to not have a super heavy suitcase. So I think the first week of May I'll just really focus on like reading a bunch of smutty novels on my Kindle. And also um, there's two middle grades that I put on here that I think I'm going to bring with me. And then everything else will kind of save for when I'm back. So without further ado, let's start with the romance because why not? So the first romance that I have on here is Able by Katie Roberts. Katie Roberts is literally becoming one of my favorite romance authors. Like her smut is just top tier so good. I've been slowly making my way through the Wicked Villains series by her, which I may also read in May, but I might, I'm reading it right now. I might just like binge the rest of the series before the end of the month as well. So I don't know if I'm gonna put this on the TBR. But I just think that she is very good at exploring a bunch of different types of relationship dynamics and her books are very, very spicy. Like the spice is so good. Um, a lot of times it's like pretty kinky. So if that's something that you're interested in, it's very fun. And her Wicked Villains series is basically like retellings of these Disney characters that work in a BDSM club, but it's like the villain kind of is the love interest and gets a redemption arc. Abel is the first in the Sabine valley series which katie roberts has so many series she's always releasing new books so i really want to catch up on her backlist so that i can just be excited and like read all of her new books as soon as they drop this one came out in january i do think that there's another one coming out soon in the series or like did just come out and so this i think there's going to be seven because it's seven brothers seven brides revenge seven years in the making so this one i can't tell if it has any like paranormal supernatural elements to it but I, she does have a vampire series that's not this one which i also want to read but i'm putting that for another month eight years ago our main character's family was betrayed by those closest to them and now they are returning to sabine valley and staging their return during the feast of lamas and so that they can claim what they are owed our main character's enemies send their seven best warriors against him and with each victory he wins a bride for each of his brothers his bride is harlow a woman claimed by the man he used to call a friend eli eli is responsible for their exile and oh my god this one this one got me and if eli has a problem with it well then i'll take him as my bride too okay so i'm sensing some like mmf going on here like i really enjoy these first person uh, descriptions like book descriptions like here but it makes it so hard to do a book summary on booktube because I don't know the the name of the person that is speaking but anyways it just I love the whole premise of 
seven brides or seven brothers and like seeing how this is gonna kind of play out i don't know like if there's any supernatural creatures like involved but it does seem like there's some some sort of like families claiming what their own like politics like that which i always enjoy okay so this next one is one i've been seeing all over tiktok because i follow the author on tiktok and i adore her and her tiktoks are so funny please follow her if you don't um and this book is twisted love by anna huang and this is coming out april 29th so just in time for me to read it in may i've already pre-ordered it because i just i don't know i just like adore her tiktoks also like if you don't own a kindle i was so anti-kindle for forever and then i got one and i realized how it like can really change the reading game especially when like buying every book that you read gets expensive and also space consuming it just makes me loading from the library easier and okay so the, here's the cover oh my gosh i'm pretty sure that this has like choking involved <laughs> sometimes it, i just like can't believe that i'm out here on the internet talking about like yeah so i'm reading this book where the main character like likes getting choked by her love interest who have i become i don't know but you know what i'm here to share all the good wrecks with you guys <laughs> okay oh my god this opening line it gets me it says he has a heart of ice but for her he'd burn the world i love that Okay, so Alex Volkov is basically a devil disguised as an angel and he's burdened by his traumatic past and he basically doesn't have time for anything in this world. But one thing starts to melt his icy heart and that is his best friend's sister and he starts to like feel things for her. Ava Chen is a free spirit trapped by a childhood that she can't remember. But despite her broken past, she's never stopped seeing the beauty in the world, including the man who has such an icy exterior. Her brother's best friend, her neighbor, her savior, and her downfall. So this is described as a brother's best friend opposite the track romance with a hint of suspense. Oh, also, I just wanted to mention any of these romance novels that I recommend are for 18 plus audiences, and please check the triggers before you read them. Because I haven't read them myself, I can't give like in-depth triggers. Okay, next, I'm gonna move on to one that's more of like an urban fantasy, and that is Black Sunshine by Karina Hale. Ever since Maddie read this and said how much she loved it, I was like, okay, I'm gonna read it. And she said there's like some blood sharing because it's vampires and like that's post- supposed to be like hot so i'm here for the spice so lenora warwick is the daughter of two vampires and basically like, her parents were killed but then it was discovered that because she was the daughter of them she's special and so she's like kind of raised separate and all she wants for her 21st birthday is a normal time hanging out with her friends drinking having fun unfortunately fate has other plans for her because a week before her birthday she is kidnapped by a brooding and dangerous stranger with cold eyes and a lethal touch. Absalon Solon Starvig is not your typical criminal as he is a centuries old vampire who's caught between wanting to kill Lenore and wanting to save her. Because Lenore is also a vampire, she just doesn't know it. But once she turns 21, her turning is about to happen. And Solon hopes he'll be there to guide her and opening her eyes to her deepest hungers. Black Sunshine is a dark adult standalone romance with a paranormal twist about sex, love, secrets, and revenge set in contemporary San Francisco. So this one just sounds so good. And Maddie loved it and we have similar tastes. So she loved it. I feel like I'll love it too. And she told me to read it. So, well, there you have it. And then the last one for like this little romance that I want to read this month is Rhapsodic by Laura Thalassa. And this has been like, I have my fantasy romances I wanted to read series, which um, I have two of those videos up. So that's 20 books in total. Clearly I cannot read all of those in a short amount of time. So I've been trying to work my way through them so that I can do some sort of like wrap up at the end of the year or something like that. But I just have been enjoying the genre a lot. And this is kind of like a staple of fantasy romance, I feel like. So I definitely want to get to this one soon. So I'm finally going to read it this month. I had it on my March TBR. I never got to it because it was near the bottom. But because I have this long period of time where I'm on vacation and I can just chill and read romance on my Kindle in the pool that's what I'm gonna do. So this is number one in the Barkner series. And then this is like fey siren creatures. So Calypso Lilis is a siren with a very big problem. She has been getting favors from one known as the Barkner and it's in the form of like kind of like a black bracelet of beads like rolling up her wrist and everyone represents a favor that can be called in. Only death or repayment will fulfill the obligations. And everyone knows if you need a favor, you go to the Barkner to make it happen. He's a man that can get you anything you want at a price. When Callie finds the Fae King of the Night in her room, she knows that things are about to change. All that he wants is to call in one of his favors in exchange for a kiss. 
and a promise for more. And But for the bargainer, it's more than just a rekindling of an old romance. Something is happening in the other world where fey warriors are going missing one by one and only the women are returned in a glass casket with a child at their breast. And there are whispers that an ancient evil has been awoken. And if the bargainer has any hope of saving his people, he needs to rely on the siren he spurned long ago. Only his foe has a taste for exotic creatures and Callie just happens to be one. So yeah, I like the mix of siren and fey. I think it'll be a cool mix and I've just heard great things about this series. So it's time to read it. And then next in May, I want to continue on with Yona of the Dawn, which is a manga that I've absolutely been loving. I've been making my way very, very slowly through the volumes, but I just adore it so much. I read volume six in April. I don't know if I'll get to seven before the end of the month. Um, so I'm gonna put seven and eight on my TBR for this month. But Yona of the Dawn follows Yona, who's a 16 year old princess. When on her birthday, her father is murdered and a coup is staged in her kingdom. And so she takes up with her bodyguard and goes on this journey to take back her kingdom. And we just see Yona grow so much as a character. And it's a shoujo manga, but it has like hints of shonen because it is like adventure. And I just absolutely adore this series. I adore it so much. I love Yona's character growth and it's just so fun to see her go on her journey and this one has like it's up to like volume 31 or something now and I've just been loving it so so much and yeah I definitely want to make some more progress on this series because I've been kind of liking slowly making my way through it. I've been reading this series for a long time now because I don't read like that much manga a month like I could binge it but anyways so seven and eight is the goal for May. The other graphic novel that I want to read in May is Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman and this I got as an ARC even though it was already published in the UK. I think it's like a US ARC so it's basically like the finished thing I guess. But yeah so this is the story of Charlie and Nick and basically their sweet romance together in high school and that's pretty much like all I know about it. I just know that everyone adores this because it's so heartwarming and there is a Netflix or just some sort of adaptation coming out and I saw the picture of the cast and that's kind of what inspired me to finally pick this one up so I can't wait. Okay, now on to the middle grades that I want to read. This is a series that I just like adored when I read the first two um, back at the end of 2020 and I want to make my way through it because this might be my new favorite middle grade series and that is Keeper of the Lost City via volume 3 which is Everblaze and volume 4 which is Never Seen and this series follows Sophie who has always had the power to read minds but no one else around her does the same thing. She thinks she's just like this anomaly until one day she meets a boy that can also read minds. And then from there she discovers that she is an elf and she goes on this journey into the elf realms to kind of like connect with her heritage and learn learn the elven ways. And so it like has this school setting as well as just like these adventures and the found family trope is just amazing. And like this is everything that I could ever want in a middle grade series. I know if I read this when I was a kid, it would have like such a profound effect on me. So I just like adore it so, so much. And it's a pretty big series. Like these books are pretty thick, even though the text is big because you know, middle grade, but like I love this series. So I think I'm gonna take these two with me to Florida and hopefully read them. And I'm trying not to bring any more hardcovers with me because they're chunky, they're heavy, but I just really want to make progress on this series because I adore it so freaking much. Yeah, if you look like on the back here, that's how many are out at the moment. Nine, six, seven. I think eight and eight point five are out as well. I actually don't know how many are like going to be in the series total. Okay, so now for the four to six YA novels that I want to read, there is going to be some carryover from April that I didn't get to, but I really want to read. The first is Crier's War by Nina Varela, which she's stunning. Look at how beautiful that metallic cover is. I love this. This is a sapphic romance between an automaton and a human. In the kingdom of Rabu, the Otome have basically broken out of their oppression from the humans and taken over. And now... Isla, who is a servant in one of the great automaton houses, is trying to avenge the death of her family by killing the Sovereign's daughter, Lady Cryer. Cryer has been preparing to take over the work of her father and the rule of the land. But that was before she was betrothed to this man who isn't as benevolent as she thought she was and before she discovered that her father has been keeping secrets. And that was before she met Isla. So it just seems like a star-crossed romance between these two and like I, I'm just so drawn to this and from Perfect Paperbacks loves this book, highly recommends it and I've just been like really wanting a really good sapphic. 
fantasy because I feel like I've not read one in a while since um, Girls of Paper and Fire I think was the last one that I read like why is sapphic fantasy so I definitely want to make an effort to read more and this seems perfect next we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by B.E. Schwab how many TBRs have I had this on I don't know but it's going to happen in May because I just want to read this so bad I just like know I'm gonna love it so so much so the tagline is never pray to the gods that answer after dark so in 1714 France Addie LaRue prays to the gods that answer after dark and makes a deal with the devil. She is able to live forever, but no one will ever remember her. She is determined to find excitement in her new life, even if she is completely alone. Or not completely alone, as every year on her birthday, the dark god that she made a deal with visits her and asks her if she's ready for her bargain to be ended. Their darkly thrilling game spans the centuries. It will be 300 years before she stumbles into a hidden bookstore and discovers someone who can remember her name. I've just heard great things about this. I love E. Schwab's writing. I just adore her. This is happening. In May, it's happening. So the next two books that I have on my TBR are ones that are coming out both on May 4th. And the first one is Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. Trisha Levenseller is one of my all-time favorite authors. I have adored every single one of her books that I've read. And this one is about a sword maker with anxiety. And I think this is going to be a duology, which is exciting. So Ziva prefers metal to people. She spends her way tucked away in her forge, safe from society and the anxiety it causes her. She uses her magical gift to craft weddings with magic imbued in them. Then Ziva receives a commission from a powerful warlord and her blade has the power to steal secrets from those it is wielded against. When Ziva learns the warlord's intention to use the blade to enslave all the world under her rule, she takes her sister and flees. Joined by a distractingly handsome mercenary and a young scholar with extensive knowledge of the world's known magics, Ziva and her ragtag group set out on a quest to keep the world safe until they can figure out how to destroy the sword or find a worthy wielder. I mean, that just sounds amazing. It's just so Trisha Levenseller. I love her style. I love her works. I'm so excited for this one. I first heard her talk about it at the signing for um, The Shadows Between Us, which is like the last book signing I went to before COVID, and I was instantly sold. Then we have Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard, which is her first work outside of the Red Queen series, which I love because it's one of the first YA series that I read when I was getting back into YA, so it just holds a spe special place in my heart. And I love the cover. It's so badass. So a strange darkness grows in Alaguard. Corianne and Elmar can feel it, tucked away in her small town at the edge of the sea. She soon discovers the truth. She's the last of an ancient lineage and the last hope to save the world from destruction. But she won't be alone. Even when darkness falls, she has her companions with her. A squire forced to choose between home and honor, an immortal avenging a broken promise, an assassin exiled and bloodthirsty, an ancient sorceress whose riddles have eerie foresight, a forger with a secret past, a bounty hunter with a score to settle. Together they may stand against the vicious opponent. And yeah, I mean this just sounds like such a classic like group of people band together to save the kingdom and i just absolutely love that i love victoria aviard so i'm just really excited for this book i hope i love it i've heard nothing but great things so i'm excited and with that that is my may tbr let me know if you've read any of these books and enjoyed them or let me know what you are reading this may down below in the comments please leave a little heart if you've made it this far and have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one mm -hmm.